on camera. Start it now. Today is Friday, September 21st, 2018. My name is Sue Verhoff, and I am Director of Oral History and Genealogy at the Atlanta History Center. With me today is Kurt Mueller, and Kurt is a member of the Atlanta Vietnam Veterans Business Association and a volunteer at the Atlanta History Center. And we are honored today to be here with Mr. Louis C. Thompson. We are interviewing Mr. Thompson at his home in Cumming, Georgia, and his interview is being captured for the Library of Congress Veterans History Project. Mr. Thompson, thank you for being with us here today. And thank you for agreeing to do a part two of your experiences in the United States Army during World War II. When we last chatted with you, we had gotten through your background and growing up years and your training and your trip from the United States to India. And you told us some great stories about what living conditions were like there in India. And we had just gotten to the part where they were asking for volunteers for a certain kind of duty. So I'm going to let you take it from there. Do you remember when they asked if you wanted to help out with the air crews? Oh, yes. Okay. Tell us about that. All right. Well, uh, I was, uh, at the time, I was stationed up in, uh, in Burma about uh, 100 miles uh, down the road on the Lido Road on the way to uh, 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 opening up the, the Lido Road for uh, uh, logistics and uh, for the shipment of gasoline and uh, <coughs> uh, uh, gasoline and uh, uh, other ammunition and food and other supplies as necessary to support an army. Uh, we, um, li li living up there in the jungle, and it is a very intense jungle. Um, it's uh, uh, an, an unusual place. It's, it, in a way, it is quite similar to uh, Vietnam's environment. Uh, in that you have very uh, thick trees and bamboo that grows naturally, and uh, it's uh, uh, not a very pleasant place because of the uh, the bugs and the animals and so forth that uh, live in the in the wild jungles that uh, is not, is not. Uh, 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 Farmed, or, nor is it uh, uh, hunted to any any extent possible. <clears throat> um, they, uh, oh, I had been up there in the jungle about uh, a, a couple of months, and uh, at the time I was uh, just uh, w working at a. Um, uh, a distribution center, or, or sort of, uh, where we collected, um, uh, dropped in uh, uh, food and and supplies uh, that had been already delivered, usually by air, and uh, and then we would redistribute it to uh, the military as as their uh, needs. Uh, were, uh, were uh, forwarded to us, and we and we would uh, fill them, and uh, they would take the the supplies on back to their their, their units. These units included uh, not only the uh, American, but also a few of the uh, Indian troops and some Chinese troops. Also, the Chinese troops were under the command of. Uh, uh, Stillwell and, and his and, and his uh, company over there. <laughs> okay. Um, let's see. Uh, okay, uh, it was a usual hot, hot jungle day, in that uh, it was uh, it, it, it was uh, uh, what I want to say. I, I want to say it was. Uh, uh, warm. It was uh, not too not too different from 
from uh, South Florida or, or South Georgia in that uh, the temperature would go up in uh, uh, 80s or 90s every day. And oftentimes in the, during the monsoon season, which uh, is, is in the springtime, and that uh, uh, goes in, and that goes into um, uh, August. Um, anyway, um, uh, anyway, it was a uh, miserable uh, living over there because uh, we had, I had, uh, we, we didn't have any facilities of, of uh, the normal. Uh, um, of, uh, to support normal living. We uh, slept because it was, the ground was always wet in the, in the, in the uh, daytime and the nighttime. And, and in addition to that, we had, um, uh, uh, we were in the middle of the monsoon season in which it rained nearly every night and after raining every night, then it would turn turn hot the next day, and the temperature would be up in the in the nineties uh, uh, the, the next day, and uh, uh, you never know you'd, you'd never know it. Uh, it it was it had rained all night. <clears throat> um, Anyway, I was happy to get out of that, get get away from there because of the the uh, terrible environment we were in. I uh, the um, American troops, oftentimes our only living facilities was um, uh, uh, hammocks that uh, they had forwarded to us from uh, from the states. And uh, we had to use hammocks because there was no dry ground. You walked around in mud all day long. And uh, <coughs> at night you would uh, uh, climb out of your, your boots. And yes, and they were boots. And uh, leave your boots in the mud and climb into your hammock uh, like that. So um, it, it was not very pleasant. And so when the suddenly the opportunity opened itself up, and uh, I heard that uh, some that uh, because of recent losses in uh, in the American troops back at the uh, center where they were uh, shipping the uh, uh, supplies out from, uh, they. Uh, uh, they they had had a number of casualties of planes that didn't come back and things of this sort. So we um, uh, so they had to re replenish them and rather than bring over brand new uh, troops from the states, they just uh, were were moving them around out there in the jungle. Uh, a, a call came through from headquarters and it said that. Uh, they had an opening for about uh, uh, three or four um, volunteers to uh, uh, leave their current facilities in the jungle and relocate back to the uh, uh, head headquarters. And uh, they needed people to ride with the planes that were, were airdropping because uh, uh, that's, uh, they had to have somebody on board the airplanes that uh, could uh, uh, unload the planes, in the, usually in the air. Um, uh, when we got over the uh, target area, um, this uh, uh, and and so when they uh, they asked me if 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 I'd be interested in volunteering and. And I immediately said yes. I said anything to get me out of this place. <laughs> so uh, to get, uh, I mean, uh, where you can sleep in a dry bed at night and sleep in a, in a tent, a real tent, and not just a, a, a bashi or something that we had been using. Um, 
or wh whatever we could get to use. Uh, anyway, um, we, uh, so I, anyway, I, uh, I was there when they got the call and uh, uh, I said, I'll go, I'll go, I'll volunteer, in spite of the fact that uh, uh, they have that uh, tradition in the, in the Army as in other armed forces, never volunteer for anything because it's usually worse than what you've got. Uh, in this instance, uh, it was uh, it, it was an improvement over what we had, because because it, the current environment was very very unpleasant and unsatisfactory, and there's no outlook for an improvement over that. Uh, so much for that. Anyway, uh, the uh, they said oh, pack up your stuff, everything you own, and. Uh, We'll take the next plane out of there. So they, I put uh, uh, everything I had in a, uh, a barracks bag, and uh, we th threw it on a plane and uh, took off with uh, about three other uh, other men that they were going with me, and they. Uh, uh, let's see now. Uh, okay, and they flew us back to uh, a, rear, a rear echelon, a field uh, just, uh, just over the India uh, borough border in, in, uh, in India. So, um, uh, see now. Okay, and anyway, uh, when we got when we, we got to India, they uh, took us to a tent and uh, established us in a tent and said, gave us uh, assigned us a bunk, and there we were to stay for <coughs> the next. Um, I guess it was about the next six six eight months. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm trying to sneeze. <laughs> uh, and Mr. Thompson, that was about 1943. <coughs> um, Am I right? Yes. Okay. It was about 1943. Uh, yes. It was either 1943 or 44. Let me see now. Is I guess the only way to tell it would be for trying to remember when Christmas was that year. Uh, and it, anyway, it's not significant. Right. <coughs> uh, uh, anyway, um, and uh, they told us that they, they put, you, put your name up on a bulletin board, and if if you were scheduled to fly. Uh, the next day, then you'd be prepared to uh, take off and fly at about uh, five o'clock in the morning, and uh, we'd uh, we, we'd fly uh, to our our, our uh, assigned mission, unload uh, the, our cargoes, and uh, uh, and then turn. Then turn around and go back, <coughs> go uh, go back to our home field, which was at this time it was at a little place uh, near Lido called Sukerting in the, in uh, the Hindus. Uh, in, in in the it was an Indian name. Uh, <coughs> Uh, okay, uh, and uh, that went well. It was uh, uh, it was hot and dry and so forth, and so we had, uh, but but it, it was tolerable living conditions. At least we were not working in the in the rain. Um, but, uh, moving on, we uh, went. Uh, and th this continued on. Uh, we were flying about eight or nine days out of ten 
uh, we didn't get many days off because they were shorthanded and they had just enough uh, men available to service the tra the, the tra planes that, that were taken off regularly or daily. Mr. Thompson, can you tell us a little bit about what a typical day would have been? You said you, you would have been notified about five in the morning? Yes. And then well, how would that go? How long were you in the air? What was it like to unload? Okay. Well, all right. Uh, a, a typical day was something like this. <clears throat> They'd get us up <clears throat> at about uh, uh, 4.30 in the morning, still dark, of course, and uh, go down and get uh, uh, whatever, whatever we could find for, for breakfast. Uh, it was either uh, 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 powdered eggs or uh, something of this sort. And, uh, and and maybe some bread, and that and that was about it. We would uh, take all uh, the planes were, <coughs> were for most part were, were always always all almost always low already loaded, and so as soon as <coughs> we uh, had had something to eat, then uh, we'd go climb on board. And check the uh, the uh, the, uh, the cargo, <coughs> say that it was secured down, <coughs> and are ready to fly. Um, and by that time, uh, the, the the flight crew would show up, and uh, they would uh, check the plane out and uh, get it ready to uh, to take off. <coughs> We would take off at about uh, uh, 5.30, maybe 5.30, something like that thing, unless it was uh, some un uh, unexplained uh, difficulty. <coughs> and we'd take off uh, heading west, and uh, it was um, always, uh, it, it, it was all, always dark when we took off in the morning, and we'd fly uh, east, and then we'd fl we uh, for about uh, depending upon how far how far down the peninsula we were going, we would uh, arrive usually at about uh, uh, two hours and a half to three hours later at our target area, in which case we'd be alerted by uh, and uh, by the pilots that uh, we were approaching uh, target areas. The target area now in this case was uh, about uh, uh, 200, about 200 miles from the Indian border uh, down the peninsula into, into Burma. And uh, when, when we got down there, we'd, uh, it was usually early morning and uh, well, he'd, Go in there and buzz the field, and alert the uh, the, the ground crews that uh, w we had arrived. Um, and then on on a signal, we uh, we'd make another pass at it, and uh, this time we would uh, unload we would unload the uh, the ammunition and uh, and the food and whatever else we were carrying to the ground troops there. Uh, uh, they <clears throat> Okay. Uh, and uh, and uh, well, the, the, those of us that were the other part of the flight crew was, uh, would have it all stacked up near the door and uh, then on, on a signal from the, uh, from the cockpit, uh, we would push it out the door. And, uh, and, uh, on, uh, and uh, they had a, uh, uh, some sheets laid out on the, uh, on the ground that would uh, identify the, 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 the uh, area in which it was best to uh, 
uh, uh, target them so they could collect the uh, the uh, cargo and uh, run it off to uh, wherever they were storing it. Um, and uh, we it would usually it it would consist of approximately uh, uh, anywhere from six to ten different passes over the cargo area. Uh, sometimes they were hostile areas in which we would get a draw ground fire. Sometimes they were not hostile. And uh, it was just as far as we uh, near could tell, it was, uh, they, it was just a, 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 an empty uh, hole in the jungle. And uh, we took off, and so uh, we, uh, uh, and we, uh, we would drop, we'd take about six, six or, se or seven uh, uh, drops uh, out of about, uh, uh, and we were dropping at about, uh, I'm trying to think, about, uh, about, uh, 500 feet, maybe 500 feet in the air, something like that. And each pass would take approximately um, uh, about 10 minutes, something like that thing to do a pass. You go around and then you, you, you pull up on, on the, the far side, make a, a wide loop and come in and do it again and again. And when, when they were all done, then they would communicate to the ground crew that uh, we, uh, we have delivered it and uh, we're going back for another load. Uh, and that was it. Uh, and then the, the ground crew would come out with their trucks and, and uh, uh, coolies who would um, uh, uh, proceed to load uh, the uh, the cargo we had delivered either into trucks or uh, however they were doing it at that particular site. It varied with with the environment whether there was there there was a, a warehousing available or there was no warehousing available or uh, this sort of thing. Uh, then, um, uh, then, then they turn around and we uh, we do a 180 and fly back to uh, India again, Sukhothai, which was just over the border in into India, and it was a a, a, a peaceful a peaceful place we were flying to. I, and I mean, as far as the war was concerned. Uh, and about how long would it take you to get back then? About what time of day would you be coming home? Uh, we'd get back, uh, depending upon the the mission. May have uh, it, it, it usually started around uh, uh, five by five o'clock in the morning. We were airborne. And uh, sometimes a li little earlier if the weather was good and so forth, and then uh, we'd we'd uh, make our drop, and it would take uh, about uh, 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 about thirty minutes altogether to make to uh, drop uh, uh, about six thousand to seven thousand pounds of uh, of cargo. And then we'd uh, we'd fly back to India and arrive back in there in in about uh, uh, maybe uh, two or three hours back, and whereupon we would uh, sit back down on the runway and uh, they had trucks already waiting to re to reload the plane and uh, repeat the whole process over and over again. And in that way, we were moving a considerable amount of tonnage uh, from uh, India into uh, Burma. Uh, and it was consisted mostly of uh, food and uh, uh, ammo and, uh, and some other ordnance, as well as 
sometimes some mail or, or, or whatever was designated or sometimes there was medical supplies in there there was if, if there happened to be a hospital there so about how many sorties would you make each day uh, usually it well it, it depended on how far each sortie was uh, some uh, in uh, in the early part of the of our drop uh, history uh, we would uh, in the early time, we would uh, uh, have to fly about uh, uh, an hour and a half each way after and uh, maybe another half an hour to drop. Uh, then as we get, we worked our way further down the peninsula, the uh, uh, Burmese Peninsula, uh, as we worked our way down, it uh, took uh, the, the time to arrive at target areas and return would be uh, a good bit more. Maybe uh, uh, it, it, it wound up by being as sometimes as much as uh, about uh, uh, three hours each way and uh, another th 30 minutes or so to, uh, to drop. Uh, your your cargo depends upon what what it was, and uh, and another uh, a, a trip home again, and sometimes so that sometimes made for a long day, if you took uh, about uh, uh, three or four hours to get there, and uh, a half an hour to drop, and another three hours to get home and uh, another uh, half an hour to reload the plane, sometimes more than that. And uh, so it was it made for a very long day and we finally wound up back, back home at night, uh, all tired out at, at about uh, uh, maybe seven o'clock at night and for a, uh, a late supper and uh, and go, and then you go fall into bed because you've been up and working uh, since uh, early morning since uh, f four o'clock ish, so it was it, it was tiring, but uh, we did it every single day. For we we were flying uh, on the average of about. Uh, 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 it depends upon how far we had to go. It may have been only two or three uh, round trips uh, a day you know, if we were uh, going uh, quite a ways, if we were not going that far because it was a closer target area, then we would, uh, we would uh, uh, get there sooner and start back and sometimes we, we could manage to get in as many as three, three drops in a day, which filled in the whole day, you can be sure of that. And we'd finally struggle back, uh, back in and uh, back, back at our home field and, uh, uh, and uh, they'd have a, a vehicle waiting for us to take us back to our tents. And, we're, and we'd uh, maybe catch a, a snack or something in the kitchen, whatever, whatever, whatever they had left over. And so uh, we, so, so that consisted of, of a full day's work. Uh, it was, uh, now we also had days in which we'd fly all the way down to uh, a, a sort of a distant target area, but uh, if the, if the, we, when, we got, when we got down there the weather was bad, and, or when, when I say bad I mean you couldn't see the ground, then uh, uh, sometimes we had to circle until such time as the, the ground cleared, we could see the target areas, or in, in another instance, <clears throat> if you could if you couldn't see the ground area, uh, then we just uh, turn around, and take bring it back until such time as we could see the ground area. 
you got to be able to see the ground area in order to see exactly where to drop it. A drop area can be uh, maybe as little as uh, three or four acres of, uh, of open land, or it could be as much as a, a hundred acre rice paddy in which they were using uh, part of it been cleared off so they could uh, uh, drop uh, cargoes there. Did it happen often that you had to abort a mission because of weather? Uh, uh, it did, it, it was dependent on uh, uh, the time of the year. Season, okay. Uh, in the time of the year and during the monsoon season, sometimes we'd get all the way down there all the way down the target area, and uh, you, it, it never opened up. It was low ceiling the whole time, and uh, not being able to see the cargo, the ground area, then uh, we, could, we, we couldn't drop there. It, it, it would take about, uh, 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 about uh, I, I'd say 20 minutes Something like that, uh, about 20 minutes for, for uh, uh, to unload uh, about eight tons of food or whatever we, we were carrying down there, ammo or uh, sometimes it was things like a horse feed if they were, if they had horses. Some of the troops had, had horses that they could use to, to haul. Um, uh, the uh, uh, he heavier ammo that uh, guys couldn't couldn't do that, and if you had an area in which uh, uh, that uh, people uh, couldn't uh, uh, carry it, so they just have to <coughs> excuse me. Uh, so so they they'd have to put them on on the backs of mules or something like that. They. And uh, and take it out. Uh, it was uh, a rather monotonous thing in a way, but it was it, it was the whole life lifeblood of those people on the ground. Uh, we would see the, the people on the ground sometimes. The <coughs> the um, <coughs> people on the ground were uh, natives. Uh, uh, who would who, who, who lived down there, and uh, they would be available to gather up the <coughs> uh, the ammo and uh, the cargoes that we dropped, and uh, help the, help the, the American troops to uh, carry them back to uh, <coughs> any warehouse or something that what, whatever arrangement they had to to store this kind of stuff until they could move it again. Uh, nothing ever went, went out. Uh, that, that is, we never picked up a, any cargoes to, to go it out, uh, to take it out of there. Everything was in. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> um, uh, on, on rare occasions, um, on, uh, on rare occasions, uh, we did, if the, if the ground permitted it, uh, we, would, we would land and uh, they would pick up some stuff to come out. Uh, it may have been just information, it could be just, be, just be documents, it might have been uh, who knows what it was, uh, there was or, or uh, a bag of of something which uh, didn't matter to us what it was, but, but we just didn't know what it was. But uh, it, it was due to c come back to uh, the uh, headquarters area. And this, the aircraft that you flew, was it always a C-47? Yes. Yes. Well, I say yes, but <coughs> um, yes. The, the, Let's just say the answer is yes. Okay. Um, there were a few flights uh, in which uh, they we loaded uh, uh, some special cargoes in 
either emergency things or things of this sort in smaller airplanes. Okay. Um, and uh, they would fly out, and they were little airplanes, L4s and L5s. Not, that's a little single engine plane that uh, could, could get in there and drop uh, either medical supplies or, or oxygen or something of this sort. <clears throat> and uh, so, so, so it just depended on what they had to bring in. Okay. Um, Any flights that you remember that stand out more than others? I'm sure you had to have had some. Oh yes. Um, yes. Uh, some of them were 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 quite uh, difficult in that uh, they had um, we would uh, either be. Have have ground fire uh, coming from the one end or another of uh, from the the ground that that had not been been taken, and sometimes we also saw um, uh, in uh, situations where there was uh, hostile uh, uh, hostile fire uh, targeted on us. To see if they could bring us down, and sometimes, and sometimes they did. Those that uh, lost a lot like that, uh, you just never saw them again. I don't, I don't know what happened to them. So, some of them came back, and some of them didn't didn't make it back. Was your plane ever hit? Oh yes, we had planes that that got hit, uh, but the majority of them. <clears throat> that uh, didn't did not come back was uh, they came back or they 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 crashed along the line because we never heard from them again. Um, they were f uh, flying fairly close to the ground. Well, I say about uh, uh, around anywhere from twenty five hundred to five thousand feet high as much. Is about all that they did, and uh, if if there was a case like if there was a situation like that, and they got they got shot at from ground fire or so forth, uh, then you just didn't know when they uh, what what the final disposition was. You sometimes wondered if it if it crashed along the line or or what it was. <coughs> you just don't know. Um, there was a, a number of people that uh, uh, spent uh, I should, a, uh, a few people um, uh, crashed along the line and were able to uh, land in in a rice paddy or something of that sort and able to to walk out or to, uh, take uh, get out of there. Uh, I had a specific uh, instance uh, experience, I guess I should say, <clears throat> uh, when uh, I was scheduled to, to fly out on a, a flight one morning early and uh, I was up on the bullet board as uh, one of the flyboys and uh, <coughs> we, um, w w what happened is that uh, and the night before, I had developed a terrible head cold, and I was all choked up. And the uh, the doctor uh, looked at me and says, uh, you, "You can't fly today because you're all choked up." And that was true because uh, uh, I couldn't breathe, and my ears would crack and and uh, crunch every time I swallowed. So uh, he said, you, you, you go back and we'll put you back on uh, flight tomorrow. So I did, and, and as a result, they had to go back and uh, reassign somebody else to take that flight of, uh, for me. And uh, so why is that interesting? Because that plane never came back. Wow. That, that's why. <laughs> wow. uh, it was... Uh, you know, we didn't know why it just didn't didn't come back. Some so, uh, somewhere downwind, uh, down down downfield, it uh, it 
<coughs> either crashed into a into the side of a of a, a mountain, or else it uh, it uh, was shot down, or don't know specifically, or if it was a navigational error or whatever it was. But anyway, <coughs> that makes a situation like that makes you stop and think. Hey, that could have been me. <laughs> Yes. Yes, that could have been me. In fact, it was supposed to be me. And maybe the good Lord was looking out for me or who knows what. Uh, <coughs> you try not to to dwell on situations like that thing because it is never a, a positive uh, situation to think about. <coughs> let, let me, let me let, let's turn it off for a minute. I want right. to get some water. In one particular instance that uh, I'll always remember was uh, uh, we were in t uh, we were down on the here on the uh, river. I gotta stop and think what's the name on the Irrawaddy River. Uh, uh, I mean, no. It, yes, it was the Irrawaddy River. And uh, apparently the, uh, <coughs> the the troops in there hadn't completely secured the uh, the drop site, and it was there was a bridge there, and uh, they were uh, we were supposed to drop at the ed edge of the bridge, and uh, then they would carry the supplies across the bridge when it was safer. And uh, uh, the fighter planes were in there trying to uh, trying to uh, uh, clear it, so it'd be safe enough. And uh, uh, so we were just circling and waiting till they secured the area. And in the meantime, the the, the fighter planes were uh, dive bombing and strafing the uh, the uh, enemy in there that while they tried to get the ground uh, secure enough to to make our drop and so we we circled around and around that it was just like a, a playing playing games with uh, um, a toy toy airplanes by watching a, 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 a fight going on between the the airplanes in the air and uh, and the ack on the ground and so forth. But uh, they, after a little while, they, uh, they told us, hey, it was secure enough that we could go ahead and drop. And when we was secure enough, uh, we, we went ahead and dropped. And uh, as far as I know, everything finally went well. But it was kind of exciting to uh, watch a, a real f firefight going on uh, at your target area because uh, either they had lost control of it uh, of the the ground or else the, uh, some more troops had moved in or something of that sort. I don't know w w what the specifics were. They didn't tell us these things. But you got a front row seat then, didn't you? Yes, we did. And it was, and uh, we were just Flying back and forth and back and forth until it uh, until it cleared, and then we, uh, we we came in and dropped and headed for home as fast as we could. <coughs> Lou, there's a note on your form here that Ms. Wanda filled out that you were shot down while you were flying a mission. Did your plane ever actually come down? Yeah. Tell us yes. about that. Okay. Uh, one time we were, uh, I'll never forget that particular day. Uh, this was up at the, uh, the river crossing at uh, Michigan. Uh, and it, it, that's the way they, uh, they pronounce it, Michigan, but it's not spelled that way. It's, it's spelled in, in a, a native language. Uh, anyway, what they did is a, uh, uh, had this the, the, uh, the, the this American patrol was uh, of about uh, 22 people uh, 
uh, uh, under the command of Merrill's marauders that they'd brought over from the States to, to uh, help <coughs> the, the, the Chinese and the Americans secure some, some uh, bulkheads, uh, not bulkheads, but uh, secure some uh, uh, target areas. And uh, we did, we, uh, so we, uh, we, we went in there and, uh, uh, and uh, we, we, we were on the way, we were coming back from a drop zone about another uh, hour and a half. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, about an hour and a half south of there. And we got called back in on an emergency that uh, about 21, uh, a, an advanced patrol of about 21 people had uh, become separated and isolated up there on the Missionau River. Uh, had their, had, they had their backs to the, the, uh, uh, the cliff, the, uh, the, the, uh, uh, um, back to the, uh, I want to say the, uh, the river. Now they're back to the river and the Japanese were on the high side and just keep shooting them down. And uh, the Americans were running out of ammo and they were in a desperate situation and only to compound it was, uh, it was getting darker. And uh, they had 21 men down there uh, American, it was Americans, uh, Merrill's, Mar what they called them, Merrill's Marauders. And uh, so they called us in and they said, we got to have uh, somebody to go in there and make an emergency drop on for those people. And so uh, they ha had a plane in there. Uh, they would brought in a plane from somewhere. Uh, uh, it was... Uh, an official plane because it was brand spanking clean everywhere, no dust and dirt anywhere on that plane. But we uh, uh, we, we we came in there and uh, it was already loaded for us. And they explained the, tar the target was go out there and uh, make make a drop to uh, in this in a small area out there in um, <clears throat> where the uh, people, where the, let me get this straight. Uh, there was a small area in which uh, the Americans were uh, trapped back in there with their backs to the, the river and their fronts to the Japanese hostels. And uh, it, was, it was a real touch and go situation. And so they called us in there to uh, have to make a drop. Now that drop area in it, because it was small, was uh, not much bigger than uh, 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 about a little over half of a football field. And uh, the Japanese were, were in there and they had their submachine guns there and the Americans had used up uh, most of their ammunition on there that fit their submachine guns and all they had was uh, the uh, smaller guns uh, like uh, Tommy guns and things of that sort. You use a lot of Tommy guns in, in the jungle because you, your visibility is, is very poor and so you, you have, to, have to shoot where the sound is coming from or the uh, flashes are coming from rather than being able to uh, just, uh, other than just to uh, fire into, into the bushes uh, because uh, that's not too productive, but sometimes it's all you can do. In this instance, uh, when, when uh, we, we got called into this field, we were on the way home and about an hour and a half out of uh, our home field, we got this emergency call from the ground. It said uh, emergency call, uh, uh, land at Missionaw. And uh, so uh, we went in and we landed at Missionaw. And uh, there was uh, uh, 
uh, a number of people on the on the ground there, and uh, a couple of and uh, there was a plane in there too, an, Amer an American cargo plane. <coughs> What they did is they had already brought in this plane, and uh, it, and uh, it had belonged to uh, the uh, the commander of the, uh, the 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 forces of American forces in there, uh, General. Um, uh, what was his name? Uh, Wouldn't be Stillwell, would it? No. No. It was not Stillwell. It was. Uh, uh, Merrill, General Merrill, he was over there and he was with his troops and uh, this, this was his uh, patrol uh, was, uh, was uh, being uh, surrounded and attacked and, and if we didn't do something they were probably going to be wiped out probably within the next 30 minutes because it was getting darker all the time. And when it gets darker, you're really at a disadvantage in the jungle because you can't see anything. Your visibility is very, very poor. And if, when you can't see what you're doing, you're, you, you're just uh, sitting ducks. Anyway, so we, um, uh, they told us what we had to do. And so we loaded it up and uh, took off. We were only t taking uh, 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 50 caliber machine gun ammo, uh, n n nothing else but that. And so we we, we carried about, uh, uh, I guess about uh, six. I guess we had, we had somewhere around about six seven tons of it, and uh, we, we were the only people who could do it. So they. Uh, they uh, uh, had it all loaded and they put us on this plane and <coughs> told us what we had to do and what, uh, what we had to look for. And so we took off and it was only about uh, 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 no more than about 30 minutes out we uh, encountered uh, this, this uh, a group of Japanese that had uh, captured, had, had uh, surrounded the uh, Americans out there and uh, they were in deep trouble. So, but anyway, we, we, we took off, got out there and uh, as soon as we got in there and buzzed the field and uh, kind of told them we, uh, that told the ground crews that help was there, we might as well get, get ready to retrieve it. And so uh, we came in there and we made uh, uh, about, uh, uh, I think about eight drops that we, we had to make uh, in order to unload uh, all this ammunition on the American side where they could, uh, where they, they could get it <coughs> without uh, exposing themselves to hostile fire. Then, uh, so they, we, we did that. The only trouble was we were drawing, because we were only about 250 feet in the air, well within the range of, of um, uh, 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 ground fire, uh, hand, handguns, rifles, uh, uh, stones <laughs> feels like what, what it, whatever it was. Uh, we're only about 250 feet down there. You could see all these people down there like they were uh, just uh, toys, a t a tin soldiers down there. But uh, we, we knew it wasn't that it wasn't like that. <clears throat> so we, we went down there and we started. Uh, uh, we, we made our drops. We made a, of a total of about eight drops, eight passes to uh, <coughs> uh, move out uh, all this uh, all this ammo, and uh, and then but then when they were about halfway through, we start we started getting serious ground fire uh, from the ground. Uh, the Japanese, as we came, as we pulled out. Uh, they had 
re relocated some of their troops down there where they could get a better shot at the, this, really, this relieving airport, uh, this air, airplane, relieving airplane. And uh, <coughs> we did. So uh, we dropped it, uh, we dropped it, and uh, we, after about uh, four, about four or five drops on that thing, out of, out of a total of about uh, eight, I think we, we made a total of about eight drops on, uh, f on that field. But um, we, we started getting a, f a ground fire from the ground and uh, you, you could see him, you, you could see him shooting at you. And uh, they shot out uh, because they were within the range of, of ground fire. And just remember how, they just had to remember how much to lead the, the your, your uh, target area. Uh, they, uh, uh, and anyway, they, before very long, they uh, shot out the oil cooler on the right side, uh, and then they, and in which case they had to to turn that engine off because a, pl a plane like an automobile cannot run without oil, and uh, then it, and it took out the landing gear oil. Uh, the oil cooler had to go, had to be taken out because you you can't lower the landing gear without a, a hydraulic supply. So, but anyway, they took uh, so that that went out, and fortunately, we had, we got uh, we got practically everything out the door, and then we turned then they turned around and went 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 back to our uh, to safe area, and uh, uh, the guy made a real nice uh, landing. He landed on uh, with uh, one engine. And one wheel, the tail wheel was up in the air, and uh, the other wheel, the, the other ground, the uh, the other um, uh, uh, the the other landing gear was out because we, they couldn't lower the landing gear, and and uh, the, the engine was already turned off because it would it, it would have burned it would have caught on fire if you hadn't turned it off. It's one of the emergency procedures you do. So anyway, we uh, there, there was a a colonel on board, and uh, it, it was Colonel Mish, uh, 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 Colonel uh, uh, Merrill, and I couldn't remember. And uh, yes, and uh, I did when I first saw him. I didn't recognize him, but the, later on I recognized him. <clears throat> Uh, but uh, he was just l lying on the floor because those were his men down there on the on the ground, and he was vitally interested in in their welfare. <coughs> and so he um, he he was watching the whole thing, and uh, uh, and we were watching it uh, from the back door too. Anyway, it. Uh, uh, we, we we made a, a, enough drops to get practically all the uh, all the ammo on the ground, and in which and we turned and went went home. He uh, landed at the edge of a, a, a rice paddy, <coughs> but enough where <coughs> there was enough flat ground there to, uh, that they could uh, bring the plane in. The guy did a nice job. And uh, on, on one wheel, landed on one wheel and one engine. <coughs> and believe me, it was it was scary all the way around. And uh, the, I remember so well the sound of uh, bullets going through the fuselage, and the uh, the, the the crack that they make uh, when they uh, when they uh, fly through the plane. They don't uh, oh, whistle or shrill or anything like that. It's just a crack, like a small uh, firecracker. 
And uh, that's all because it's it's just a shock wave. You don't hear the bullet. You, you just hear the shock wave off the front of the bullet. So anyway, uh, we landed there and uh, it, and uh, it was we got off the plane, you walked off alive. And that's supposed to be a successful mission. And so that's what we did. And uh, Lewis was scared to death, naturally. Uh, it's, it's like being sh shot at and you can't do anything about it. <laughs> you, 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 can, you, can, you can run, but you can't hide kind of thing. But anyway, uh, <coughs> And as, as I climbed down off the plane, all the other people running up there, what happened, what happened, what happened? And uh, I was so uh, confused and in shock, I couldn't talk. My mouth just walked up and down, but it didn't work. <laughs> it's, uh, it's an unusual feeling. And, uh, but anyway, they had another Another plane there was. Uh, they just said, "Go get on the other plane, and you can go back and uh, you can go back home and f finish your day." So they did. Uh, but anyway, it was. Uh, and uh, l later on, I saw that same plane, and uh, they had it completely fixed and up and running and so forth like that thing. All they had to do was replace an engine and some oil coolers, <coughs> and um, it was flying again. So anyway, that, was, uh, that mission was uh, scratched off as, uh, as a completed mission, and we were all happy for the success uh, of, of that one. Later on, uh, about a couple of years later, I was at uh, a meeting of uh, CBI veterans down in, uh, in Florida. And uh, they invited uh, uh, the people in there to uh, stand up and talk about any experiences that they had had over in the CBI. And I got up and started talking about uh, this, uh, this particular event that will always remain top in my in my memory. <coughs> and one of the uh, the guys on the ground, one of the guys at the head table, got up and said, "You know, uh, we were the same thing because we were on the ground looking at you guys." Wow! So there was one of the the guys that I had saved, or I had helped save. And uh, it gave me a, a good feeling that uh, we were able to rescue uh, these, th this patrol of guys with no loss of life and because uh, they could uh, fend off uh, the Japanese until they could, uh, until they, they could uh, uh, re recover them and uh, protect themselves. Uh, okay, yes, stop it. <coughs> so I'm wondering, at any point, were you kind of sorry that you volunteered to do no. what you did? No. Good. No, I had a, a, a great deal of uh, satisfaction for having uh, completed uh, an, uh, a difficult mission like that thing and saved all those guys on the ground. <coughs> it was, um, uh, see now, it, it j just so happened that uh, within two weeks of uh, my experience there, within two weeks of that, I, um, I was back on flying duty, of course, and um, uh, I got back in, into my uh, uh, room and uh, I had a stomachache. And uh, so I, uh, uh, I lay down like we always lie, lie down to get some rest, whatever you could, because, because of the long days we were putting in. And, uh, but uh, the stomach ache didn't go away. So along about eight o'clock, I went over to the, the, the medics 
at uh, when we, at uh, Sukkoting, and uh, they uh, ran some some preliminary tests and so forth, and uh, they said that uh, uh, th this man has appendicitis. That that was within a week of the time that I'd been up in uh, been up at um, Michina and uh, and that uh, rescue flight. And uh, so, uh, so they sent me down to the hospital, and the hospital took one good look at me, ran a few tests, and says, get the doctor out of bed, because it was now about 10 o'clock at night. So they got the doctor out of bed, and uh, they operated and uh, took my appendix out. <coughs> and they didn't give it, bring it back to either. <laughs> so, um, but uh, so that, that was kind of the success. And then after that, and while, it, while I was uh, in the hospital, my papers came in and finally said, this man has uh, more than enough points to rotate him. That's when the, the uh, Air Force and the Army was, uh, uh, had initiated a, a point system in which they were going to rotate people back from the, from the uh, front lines. <coughs> when they sent us over there, they just waved goodbye. They didn't uh, tell us, well, well, we'll bring you back in 90 days or something like that. Uh-uh. <coughs> we'll bring you back when, when, when the war's over. And, uh, and that's, or else we bring you back in a box. So, but anyway, that's, uh, that was right at the very, very end of my career is as, as a, a flyboy in the uh, uh, 10th Air Force. <coughs> Excuse me. So tell us about coming home. Okay. Well, when I, it's, it's interesting, when I got home, uh, it was, uh, I got off the plane, I was still in, uh, I had a, um, a pith hat, uh, like, uh, uh, like, like uh, you sometimes see in the movies. It was, uh, it was uh, a sun hat to keep the sun off your head and so forth. And I still had one <coughs> that uh, well, to protect my head against the sun because uh, the little the little bitty uh, caps that um, uh, they gave us uh, to wear in the daytime uh, was not very satisfactory uh, to, uh, to protect your your head or the or, or your eyes or anything else. But um, I had gotten back and uh, they had, uh, uh, I'd gotten back and they. Uh, uh, took, uh, took, took me down to Fort Meade, yeah, Fort Meade, and uh, uh, put me in the, in the hospital, and uh, just to, uh, uh, I guess it was temporary quarantine, if you'd call it that, <coughs> because I had had malaria, uh, uh, during my trip in, uh, into India and Burma, and because I had had, bur had uh, malaria, um, they wanted to uh, check me and see whether I was uh, a, a, a carrier or not, or if I was uh, able to <coughs> transmit it to other people. Apparently, after, after a, a, a few days, they came to the conclusion that, no, I guess he's safe now. So they let me go. <coughs> and um, th then I, uh, th then they went down and they put me on a train. They said, well, we're, well you want to be discharged? And I said, yes. So they put me on a train. <coughs> uh, not an airplane, a train. I have, I've been flying on planes all day, every day for years. But now they're gonna put me on a train. So they put me on a train back to my home, uh, my home station. 
supposedly where home station was. It was a, a small town in Davenport, Florida. The interesting thing about it was that, uh, it was quite interesting, when, when the plane man looked at that, <coughs> the conductor looked at that and he says, you got a one-way ticket to uh, uh, Davenport, Florida? He said, that's interesting because he said, we don't stop there. <laughs> we don't stop there. <coughs> and sure enough, they didn't. They stopped um, and um, Meantime, I'd fired off a letter to my, to my parents and told them that uh, uh, I was on the way home and I was going to be there in a few days. A few days, yeah, I mean, none of this few hours bit foolishness. And so uh, I, I, uh, we got down there and I think it was about two days. <coughs> I'm losing my voice now. Uh, about two days on the train. We got to Davenport, and of course, the train kept on going. He didn't know he was supposed to stop and let me off. And uh, so, but uh, they, uh, they took me off to the next town and where they all stopped, and they said, okay, you, you can get off here. <coughs> that was the end, and there was, there was my mom and my dad standing there on the st side of the station. We, we're waiting for Lewis to come home. And believe me, I was glad to be there too. And uh, so they, they, anyway, and so they took me on home. And uh, it was it was a very happy uh, greeting for, for me because I, I, had, I had not had a liberty at home in uh, probably three years at least. <laughs> None of this 90-day business that, uh, that they do nowadays. We'll, we'll, we'll send them back in 90 days or this sort of thing. But <coughs> I've got to quit because I'm, I'm losing my voice. All righty. Well, Mr. Thompson, thank you so much <coughs> for this interview. You did a great job. CBI veterans are few and far between. It's hard to find you guys, and you had a very unique experience in the war. We're grateful for your service. Thank you for all you did, and welcome home. Thank you. And 